I just have to tell you guys about track practice today. It was absolutely hilarious. So we were practicing the hurdles, you know, where you have to run as fast as you can and jump over all those bar things. Mm -hmm. My teammate, Gabe, when he jumped over the first hurdle, snagged his foot and tripped. Oh. Splat. Oh, wow. um, of course, he got back up and kept running. But he didn't know. His shoelace came untied, so when he went to jump over the second hurdle, he tripped on his shoelace and fell directly into the second hurdle. <laughs> Wham. Splat. Oh, my. By this point, I would have given up, but not Gabe. No. He gets back up and starts running toward the third hurdle. Um, just as he jumps, his shoe with the bad laces flies off and hits him in the face. Oh. Oh. He then crashes into the third hurdle. Um, finally, Gabe decides to pull off his other shoe and both socks. He ran the rest of the way, barefoot, and finished the race. Uh, everybody was cheering and hugging him. It was, it was really just amazing. Well, it would have been easy for him just to give up and stop. Yeah. How amazing that he just kept going. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people actually give up when things get hard. That's why I love coaching the football team. I get to teach every person on the team that they have to try their best, that they have to keep going even when the game is at its hardest. When the other team scores a bunch of points or you get knocked down and you feel like getting up, you don't. You keep going. You got to get up and keep doing your best because you never know what happens before the game ends. I can be competitive too. <laughs> I like it when I have to try my hardest. Even if I lose, I don't feel bad because winning isn't what it's all about. You know, playing sports, can teach us important life lessons. Uh, sometimes Christians, we can think that life should be easy and we should win at everything every time. But when I read the Bible, Jesus never promises an easy life or a life full of everything you want. That actually reminds me, one of the earliest church leaders was a guy named James. He was actually a brother of Jesus. And he wrote a very important message to the followers of Jesus to persevere, which means keep going when life gets difficult. Jasmine, actually, could you read these verses, please? My brothers and sisters, you will face all kinds of trouble. When you do, think of it as pure joy. Your faith will be tested. You know that when this happens, it will produce in you the strength to continue. James said that the followers of Jesus would face trouble. Trouble can come from many places, temptation to the wrong, difficulties we face in life, and even times where other people mistreat us or hurt us. And God tells us really not to focus on the pain and difficulties, but instead to view them as a test, as a way we can increase our faith and reliance upon God. So just like when I face a really tough race, I have to focus more on my training and my technique. When life gets hard, I have to focus even more on what I know to be true about God. Exactly. Exactly. Unfortunately, it can feel easy to blame God when we have a trouble. We can think that He is the one tempting us, but that's just not true. Yeah, and God will always be with us when we're tempted and hurt. And He'll give us the courage to do the right thing. It can feel hard because when we are hurt, it feels like it will always be like that, that things will never get better. But <sighs> Jasmine, would you read uh, verse 12, please? Blessed is the person who keeps on going when times are hard. After they have come through hard times, this person will receive a crown. This crown is life itself. The Lord has promised it to those who love Him. Whoa, you mean the ruler of the universe, God himself will give a crown to those who love him despite the troubles they face? Yes, that's what the Bible tells us. The crowns that God gives resemble life itself, the life that God gives to anyone who loves him with their whole heart. And realize that the rewards that God gives us are very different from our earthly treasures. God's rewards are forever. Our earthly treasures will only last for a short, short time. They will soon disappear, get lost, or even stolen. Hmm? Yeah, earthly things like money and power will soon be gone. You mean they're going to run out or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> when Jesus returns, no one will ever need money or power of their own because Jesus will be our eternal king and he will provide for every single need of his followers forever. <laughs> Jasmine, actually, would you read this verse right here? That describes the amazing future the followers of Jesus have. Every good and perfect gift is from God. God chose to give us new birth through the message of truth. He wanted us to be the first harvest of his new creation. God is the creator of the heavens, the earth, and everything everywhere. God made everything good. And even though now we have to deal with sin and trouble, He will restore creation so that there's no darkness, no hurt, and no trouble left at all. And pay attention to that. God invites us to 
to follow Jesus and be part of Him making the world new and restoring creation. Everyone who follows Jesus shows the glory and majesty of King Jesus by their lives being transformed by His life-changing love. God's new creation starts through God's holy people, the church. And the followers of Jesus show us how great He is when they continue to go through hard times. We can know and we can show the world that God helps us through difficult things.